Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over how do we determine the standard matrix of a linear transformation. And just a reminder, uh, which I went over in my last video, um, is a standard matrix is what describes our linear transformation, where each of the columns are where our standard basis vectors lie. So first let's take a look at this example, and it's telling us to find the uh, standard matrix of L, given that L is a linear transformation that maps vectors in R3 and it maps them into R2 and is defined below. Um, so how do, how do we do this? And when, it's, when the function or the linear transformation is defined for us, it's actually really easy. So we know that since we're starting in R3, there's going to be three basis vectors, which means that our standard, our standard matrix will be three columns Here and the f each column being the transpose or sorry the transformed version of um, each of our basis vectors of R three, right? So all we have to do actually is just calculate what these things are. So we know that E one is equal to one zero zero right because this is a basis for r3 so if i were to apply the linear transformation to this vector it maps to r2 and the first component of our transformed is x3 plus x1 and my x3 for e1 is zero my x1 is one so this is zero plus one which is one my second component is um, similarly, it's x1 minus 2x2, which means that it will be 1 minus 0. So this will, this will map to 1, 1. So let's take a look at uh, E2 now. E2 would be 0, 1, 0. So applying the linear transformation to 0, 1, 0, this gives us well, x3 plus x1, that's 0 plus 0. So the first component is 0. And then I've got x1 is 0 minus 2 times 1. So this will be minus 2. Lastly, I have e3 is equal to 0, 0, 1. Remember, these are three, these are three components because we're, we're, we're starting with vectors in R3. So when I take the linear transformation of this vector, this this first component is as uh, it is one plus zero so this is one the second one is um, one minus or no zero minus two times zero is zero so this will be one zero so now we've got all of the columns of our standard basis vector or sorry of our standard matrix excuse me so now it's as easy as just plugging them plugging them in right this will be um, 1, 1, this will be 0, negative 2, and this will be 1, 0. So this right here, this is our standard matrix, and this describes the linear transformation. So when I multiply this matrix by some some vector, right? So, and the, keep in mind the vector should be in R3 because we're taking a vector from R3 to R2 then when I multiply it by this this will give me uh, or this this is like this is like what describes the function it's just in terms of like a matrix now so let's look at an example where it's not as easy and the, the function isn't described as well for us how can we do it in this case so now we're given a basis for R3 and it tells us and it doesn't say explicitly here, but we can assume that t is also another linear transformation. But this time it takes a vector in R3 and it spits out another vector in R3. And we know where um, each of our basis vectors for R3 um, are output to, but they're not the standard basis vectors. So how could we find the standard matrix t in this case? And the, the, the important thing to notice here is that since the vectors that we were given 
it tells us that this is a basis for R3. It means that we can express any vector in R3 as a linear combination of those basis vectors. So I'm just going to write that out, the linear combination of those basis vectors that we've been given. Right? It's a linear combination of these basis vectors that we've been given. Since it's a basis for R3, it means that they will span all of R3. So I can come up with any vector x that is a linear, uh, I can come up with any vector x in R3 that's a linear combination of these basis vectors. So what, what I want to do here is actually take this into reduced echelon form and put this into a matrix. So let me just write out this matrix where I've got 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 4, 1, 0, and then x1, x2, x3 on my other side. And what I want to do is, is solve for these constants, right? And it's easiest to solve for these constants uh, in terms of a matrix. And the point of this video is not to show you how to row reduce. And there's lots of things online uh, that can teach you this. So I'm just going to skip to reduced row echelon form here. Um, and I, I think I actually even have a, a video on my channel where I do something very similar when we have um, like unknowns here on this right on our augmented side. But this will result in uh, a matrix that looks something like this. Let me just copy this down. And then we've got x3 over 2 um, plus 2x2 plus x1 over 2 minus x3. And then we've got solid. So we can see um, just reading the results right off of this matrix like if we if we were to look at because at the first the first row here we can directly read off what c1 would be equal to we can directly read off what c2 is equal to from the second row and we can directly read off what c3 is equal to from the third row of this matrix so let me just write out what this actually would look like uh, in terms of a linear combination so Putting, this, putting our results from our reduced for echelon form back into the linear combination, it would look something like this. And you might be thinking, like, how is this even related? And I'll show you in just a second here. If we were to take the, um, the linear transformation of both sides, right? The linear transformation T that's been defined for us, it would look something like this, right? So we've got t the, the the transformed of the transformed version of any vector is equal to this this whole right hand side, and this is good because ideally we're if we can solve for um, like some sort of expression for like to describe our linear transformation, then we can break it up into a vector times a matrix. Then we will have shown what the standard matrix is. So. Really, we just want to focus on the right-hand side here and see what we can do to simplify this, right? And you might be thinking, well, what the heck? Like, how can I even simplify this? And it's important to remember that there's two, two things that we know about a linear transformation. And it's when we have the addition of two vectors, right, that are being transformed, it's equal to the transformed version of the first vector plus the transformed version of the second vector, right? And another thing that we know is that if we have a scalar times a vector and we transform that, it's equal to the scalar multiplied by the transformed version of just the vector itself, right? And you can kind of see here how we do have that three times, right? You've got this this first vector multiplied by some scalar, 
and then we've got we're, we're adding another vector multiplied by a scalar and then we're adding another vector multiplied by a scalar so what the, the key thing to, to notice here is that linear transformations are conserved under linear combinations so we can break this up so let, let's let's uh, simplify this a little bit so what I've done here is I've broken up my transformations by the vectors and then all I did was pull out those constants right so it's just applying that first law and then applying that second law right back to back and what we know is that we actually know what these these basis vectors transform to it tells us that in the question right right here so let's let's substitute those values into those transform vectors so I just I just rewrote them after substituting in what the question gives us and now all we're doing is just adding vectors right and we can reduce this and or simplify this as much as we can right so let's start with uh, our x1 terms okay so I've got uh, in the first coordinate I've got x1 over 2 and then it looks like the other ones are multiplied by 0 so I've got x1 over 2 and then I've got uh, two x2s and I've got uh, x3 over 2 that's our first coordinate so our second let's look take a look at our second coordinate how many x1s well the first vector multiply is multiplied by 0 um, I've got an x3 in the second one and it looks like I've got an x1 over 2 let's take a look at our x2s it looks like I've just got a, a minus x2 here and then I've got uh, positive x3 and then I'm adding another x3 over 2 so that's going to be 3 over 2 x3 great lastly I've got okay my x1's I've got from my first my first vector I've got an x1 over 2 my last vector I've got another x1 over 2 so adding them together I'll get a single x1 and then my x2's I've got 2x2 from the first vector and then I'm subtracting an x2 so that's a positive x2 and then lastly I've got x3 over 2 from the first one and then I'm subtracting uh, two x3's but then I'm adding another x3 so this should result in a single minus x3 if I've done that right awesome okay so now you might notice that I've got it looks very much like um, matrix multiplication right some sort of coefficient matrix times a vector X right if I've got half half one two negative one one half three over two negative one multiplied by x1 x2 x3 right this is the exact same thing that I've written out there so the important thing to notice here is that this is exactly how linear transformations are described right it's some sort of coefficient matrix our standard matrix and then multiply it by a vector right so this is exactly what the linear transformation is described at right so this first column represents where my first standard basis vector lands this one is the second is where my second standard basis vector lands this third one is where my last standard basis vector for R3 lands so finally the answer to this question would be right here this is our standard matrix 